Okay, in this video we're going to talk about shear walls. Um, so what is a shear wall and why are they needed? Okay, um, shear walls are designed for a force that comes against the side of your house. So uh, in this example, if you have a regular, <coughs> just a regular ranch style house, when the wind blows, it's going to put a force against the side of your house if it's coming from that direction, which means it's going to want to push the house over this direction. Okay, so what they do is they put shear walls on the corners of your houses. So if the wind, whichever direction the wind is coming from, it will keep the house from getting pushed over. So the force will be against it. So the house will stay in place. Okay, so a little bit of history about a shear wall. All right, back in the pre-1980 time frame, um, a shear wall was just built like this. You have your two top plates, a bottom plate, and then you would take a one by four and you would let it in. A let in is just where you would cut into the stud the thickness of your board, in this case a one by, so we would uh, let in three quarters of an inch and then that one by would be nailed into the stud at an angle. From an, it has to go from the bottom plate all the way up to the top plate. It has to be, all those have to be cut and then that board has to be let in so that when they add something to the outside of the house, it would be flush. Okay, so this was like pre-1980s, like 1970s and sooner, they did this, okay. After the 1980s, starting in the early 1980s, what they did, instead of letting in a brace like this, which is kind of time consuming because you have to mark it, you have to cut it, and it takes quite a bit of time. So what they did was they would sheet the corners of the house with OSB. That would then substitute for the lead in brace. And back in the early 80s, when I was first starting to build houses, we would put the OSB on the corners, but then we would sheet the rest of it with something else, uh, some type of insulating board, some um, polystyrene insulation, something else would go on the rest of the studs, okay? And then it got to the point where, well, codes were saying, well, we need to reinforce the houses more, especially if it's in a uh, high wind area or an earthquake area. So after that, they went from just OSB on the corners or plywood, they would sheet the whole house in OSB or plywood. So pretty much all of the walls in the house would can be kind of like a shear wall because they would be sheeted with the plywood, okay? Um, now, some places like California that has a lot of earthquakes or along the coast where you have a lot of hurricanes, and um, there's a lot more to the shear walls than just adding plywood to the outside. Um, some of them, some of the things that they would do is um, they would add anchor bolts so that there would be more anchor bolts on those corners to help tie them down. Some of them, if there's uh, like in California or something, they have law, uh, codes that you have to strap them down. So the straps would be attached to the concrete footings. They would, when the concrete footings were poured, the straps would be put into the concrete and then they would run up the outside of the, the wall and then nailed into the, ply, uh, into the plywood, into the studs or a post of some kind. So, I'll, um, they would have to be a lot more rigid, okay? Um, some cases, all they say, though, you're going to go with extra nails. Instead of having your nails six to eight inches apart, maybe you're having your nails three inches apart along the edge of the field, or edge of the sheet of plywood, then the field would just be the same. It'd be 10 to 12 inches. So it's just around the edges where you'd get all the extra nails, okay? And you can use either plywood or... OSB. So when you're doing some remodeling 
And like I said, most of the time these are on, just on the corners. They would put them on the corners to reinforce the corners of the house. If you have a really long house, they may put them in the middle of the house to help reinforce them. Now we're talking about older houses now since the whole thing, in most cases today, the whole entire house is uh, sheeted with OSB or plywood. Um, so these are talking about older houses. So you would see the corners for sure, and then if on a longer one, they might have them in the middle, all right? Um, so, and sometimes they would put them on the interior of the house. They would have a wall on the interior in which they would sheet that with plywood, okay? So if you're remodeling and you start tearing off your drywall and it's got OSB behind it, you can pretty much guarantee that's probably going to be a shear wall. If you tear all the drywall off and there's a lead-in brace in the wall, then it's probably going to be a shear wall. So when you go to remodeling and you think you're going to tear this wall out, you might need to get some advice on how to remove that shear wall because if you take that out, then it's going to weaken the structure of your house and in high winds or earthquakes, you could have a lot of problems with your house racking back and forth, okay? So identifying a shear wall when remodeling is very important, okay? So especially if it's on an interior wall. So you're, it may be parallel to your rafters, but like I said, if it has that drywall on, or a OSB on it or plywood, or it's got a lead-in brace, this lead-in brace on there, then it's a shear wall, and then you need to look at um, the specific codes of can you remove it, or if you can remove it, how do I replace it? Because um, in high winds or earthquakes, if it hits your house at that angle, it's going to cause a lot of problems. Okay, so shear walls are just as important when you're looking at load bearing walls. When you remove them, make sure that if you need to replace uh, like a load bearing wall or a shear wall, that you follow the new codes to make sure that they are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Okay, so recap, shear walls mostly on the corners, sometimes along the long runs of a house, sometimes they'll be built in the interior, old style, pre-1980, they'll probably be a lead-in brace. Um, after that, they'll probably be, they could be sheeted with OSB or plywood. Um, they'll use extra anchors on them, straps, extra nails, they'll either be a plywood or an OSB to reinforce your house so that it doesn't rack back and forth in an earthquake or get a straight line wind that hits the side of your house and doesn't want to blow it over, okay? So, that's shear walls and make sure you follow codes when you have to replace them.